Hey everyone, today we're going to take a look at my new 55 inch Sony Bravia A1E series OLED TV that I picked up at Best Buy. Now, I wasn't originally planning to get this TV. It wasn't even in my price range because brand new this TV goes from $2,500 to $3,000. And uh, when I went to Best Buy, I only wanted to look at, I think, three TVs, the TCL 6 series, the Vizio P series, and a Sony QLED um, Q6 FN TV. And uh, I wanted to go to Best Buy to check out their picture quality because this is something that you can't see or appreciate online on any of the TVs that you see online is you can't see the actual picture quality unless you're in person to see it. So when I went there and the salesman was helping me out um, looking at some of these 4K TVs, I saw the Sony on the uh, discounted um, section um, I guess it was one of the display models that they were selling and like I said brand new the TV is $2,500 to $3,000 and I saw it for $1,600 so that is pretty much almost a thousand dollars off and so I had to bite the bullet and get it because when I was want when I was looking at the TV and they were playing a demo that you guys will see later it was so beautiful the picture was so beautiful and so vivid that man I just had to get it so what you just saw was a brief intro and of the old the A1 series and its features and also some screenshots from courtesy of Sony so in this review we're going to talk about the specs on this TV like what type of processor it uses to upscale and things like that how many what type of connection HDMI connections and how many does it have uh, and also I want to go over uh, how to wall mount this TV because the manual that this TV came with at least for me because it's an open box item um, the manual wasn't very clear concise or very detailed on how to wall mount this thing and it was kind of confusing at first so I want to show you guys how to if you guys are thinking about getting this TV and wall mounting it how, how you would do that and uh, we're gonna go over all the features and then we're gonna talk about the picture quality of this TV what what I use this TV for and how I'm enjoying this TV so far so let's get started to give you guys a brief history lesson the Sony A1E OLED series is their first big screen OLED TVs the panels they get from um, LG but it isn't their first OLED TV Sony's first OLED TV came out in 2008 it was developed in 2007 but it went on sale in 2008 and that was the Sony XEL-1 and it was only an 11 inch TV that sold for an MSRP of like $2,500 for $2,500 for an 11 inch TV it had an aspect ratio at the time the current standard with how they are now 16 by 9 and um, it was sold in the United States, Canada, Russia, Japan, Europe, and Australia. It had uh, two HDMI inputs and also a memory stick input. And it had pretty good color accuracy, but it only had a resolution, a native resolution of 960 by 540, which is what most smartphones were resolutions were back at the time. So first off, let's talk about the design of the A1E Bravia OLED TV. From the front, all you're going to see is the picture on the TV and maybe the small little frames and nothing else because the TV does not have the traditional TV stand like other TVs. It's basically looks like a picture stand 
like think of a picture stand and that is what the Sony A1E series is meant to kind of look like so it's a very at least in my opinion it's a pretty cool design as far as like there's no traditional stand and um, so all you're looking at is the picture on the TV but it does because it does have the kickstand in the back like other or an easel like other TV stands it tilts slightly backwards probably about, about like they say 5 or 10 degrees back which isn't much and because it's OLED and when you're once you're looking at the TV you won't really notice the, the, the backward tilt I mean but for aesthetic reasons some people might be bothered by that backward tilt it never bothered me like I said and it isn't going to bother me because I'm, I have this wall mounted so here as you can see from the side the TV is very thin compared to like your LCD LED TVs with a backlight remember OLEDs are organic light emitting diodes so the TVs each pixel can make its own light and as you can see here I have four quarters and it's about the thickness of four quarters Here is um, a triple A battery, and it's thinner than a triple A battery. It's thinner than a triple A battery, as you can see. And then here is my Samsung Galaxy Note 4 smartphone. So the Galaxy Note 4 is about 8.5 millimeters thick and it looks like it seems to be a little bit thinner than even a Note 4. This was a display demo that was playing at Best Buy that made me fall in love with this TV and why I had to get it. So while that demo plays, let's go over the specs. The A1E OLED series of TVs from Sony comes in three sizes, a 55, a 65 inch, and a 77 inch. Like I said, I have the 55 inch, and its model number is XBR-55A1E. The actual display size measurement diagonally is 54.6. It's a 4K OLED TV with a resolution of 3840 by 2160. The panels are actually manufactured by LG, as most OLED panels are, big screen OLED panels. And um, it's the processing that is going to make the difference. And Sony uses the X1 Extreme processor for picture processing that was, up until recently, their most high-end picture processor. That has been replaced now in 2018 by the X1 Ultimate. The A1E series have four HDMI ports. Are, all four ports are HDCP 2.2 compliant. And it also has three USB ports, one on the side, two on the bottom. It's got 16 gigs of internal storage and uh, it has Bluetooth 4.1 and it's Wi-Fi certified 802.11a, b, g, n, and ac. The Sony A1 Bravia series as well as most Sony smart TVs run the Android operating system and which gives you access to Chromecast, also the Google Play Store and all the apps that you can get from Android which is why you have 16 gigabytes of internal storage. For a full list of the specs and all of this TV's features, I'm going to put a link at the description on the bottom of this video so you guys can go to Sony's website and check it out for yourselves. Okay, before we go over picture quality and sound quality of this TV, 
we're gonna go over the ease of installation or wall mounting in my case if I were to actually just have this on a TV stand the installation would have probably been very easy and it looks like it would have been really easy based off of what I've watched and also just by my experience with the TV when I got it it's the wall mounting part that's pretty confusing and not very clear especially on Sony's manual so let's talk about that so Sony's back panel slash kickstand is covered in a sh uh, cloth shroud which looks like this and you're gonna have to remove that shroud to get to all your ports and also to be able to wall mount your TV hey everyone I decided to show you guys how to wall mount your Sony XBR A1 because there's no videos on it and the instruction manual is confusing so there's this part right here for the kickstand you have to unscrew it and remove it these W1 and W2 right here they go inside this thing after you remove this bottom plate right here so when you remove the bottom plate you won't be able to use it no more as a wire um, router since you can't reattach it since you got these things to screw the the kickstand into place and then once you do that I have my um, mounting brackets right here you have to mount them at one two three four I'm using a, a Sanus tilt advanced um, wall mount from Best Buy because there's nobody who made a video on doing this yet and how to install it properly while mounting this OLED Sony OLED A1 and that's how you do it remove the bottom plate put these uh, brackets right here to get these screwed in inside and that's how you, then it's get it's ready to get mounted okay afterwards you put the back brackets right there and then I'm going to take you to the room where it's going to get installed so there's the wall mount back plate already installed you need four bolts and you're going to need a torque wrench you need a, a stud finder but I already had a, a, an old wall mount onto this so I already knew where the studs were and um, that's about it now we're ready to put it the TV onto that back plate of the wall mount so here's the TV's wall mounting brackets fully secured and mounted onto the wall mount and here's the TV fully mounted to the wall with the wall mount the TV is plugged and hooked up to my computer because I will be using the TV also as my PC monitor and one thing I forgot to mention you're gonna need two people to wall mount this TV two of you lifting and the other one guiding it into the wall mount so it can click on and get secured and fastened into place so the TV wall mounted will stick out further from the wall it's not going to be flush because of the kickstand or easel is with the TV altogether is like three a little over three inches in depth and the monitor the panel display itself is very thin as you guys saw but because of the all the other electronic components that are on the back bracket it makes it a little bit thicker so when it sticks out it'll stick out a little bit especially if you have a tilting wall mount like I have here but I like the look the TV looks like it's actually floating on air another thing I forgot to mention in the beginning of the installation video is the reason why you want to screw the kickstand into the back of the TV to secure it into place is because the kickstand and the TV won't be moving around once it's mounted onto the wall so all in all the installation process could have been so much easier 
if the instructions from Sony were a little more got into more detail and everything and it would have been a lot easier if there were some videos online that I could have saw but there, there was nothing literally nothing so I had to make one myself and as you can see right there it looks like the TV is floating in midair which is pretty cool and like I said the Sandus um, advanced tilt uh, wall mount makes it kind of stick out a little bit any kind of kickstand you have other than a fixed stand will make it stick out so now let's talk about sound quality and picture quality first up is the sound quality as you may have noticed OLED these OLED TVs they have very thin panels as far as the picture or display is the display panel and as you could notice this TV does not have the traditional TV stand for most TVs that have the speakers on the bottom this TV it's made to look like it's just all the all you're looking at is the picture so where did they put the speakers on this TV other than the rear subwoofer that's on the kickstand of the TV itself the sound that you'll hear from this TV is coming from the screen itself Sony uses what they call acoustic surface technology what that means is is that there are four actuators on two on each side of the TVs in back of the screen that vibrate to create sound on the screen the technology isn't nothing new it's been done like with this product right here the base egg it's also a technology that's been used with like glass speakers and and Sony's own Sony themselves have their own glass speaker so it's been done before but never on a TV and never on a TV screen that Sony is doing on this TV right here the A1 series so it's pretty groundbreaking so here we are sitting on my computer desk right near the TV monitor this A1E so I'm gonna let you guys take a listen at the sound quality of this TV's acoustic surface technology so here we go with some royalty free music I'm maybe about three feet away from the TV and see it's not even all the way up It's only at 26, 27, 30 percent. We're here to setting. That's the clear audio I was telling you guys about with Sony's own uh, digital signal processor or sound processor. Right now it's just on clear audio plus and standard. We could also adjust it to music or movies or whatever we're watching.
Okay, so that is that for the sound demo. So not bad for a, a TV speaker, right? You could get a sound bar or a, hook it up to a 5.1 channel Dolby Atmos surround sound system or whatever. But most of the times, this is as good as it as it'll get for a TV speaker, and it's good enough unless you're a real, you know, discerning audiophile. Okay, so now let's talk about picture quality. So we're gonna play another Sony or 4K HDR demo on my A1E TV while we talk about the picture quality. So right off the bat, um, I think out of the, out of Best Buy, the TV, the picture settings on this TV were set to vivid. And that's probably what I had it on this uh, demo right here. There's, you can calibrate it to all kinds of different picture settings from like cinema mode to standard to, you know, to go, you can go to advanced features and, and calibrate it even more to your liking. But for most people, the, picture that it comes with out of the box the standard the settings and Sony's processor is very good out of the box with you know just getting the right uh, picture settings most people including myself probably are not ever gonna really need to adjust the pictures unless you know they're really picky about you know wanting realistic or more accurate colors uh, the picture that this TV has out of the box are very stunning. They're really detailed. I mean, it's it is 4K, and the pictures are very, like I said, did I say vivid? They're very beautiful. The colors are punchy, and the blacks are very black. Just think of like how Samsung is with their uh, Galaxy and Note phones, and then blow it up to a. Uh, like a 55 inch TV and that's how this is right here, how it looks. It's very vibrant and the pictures are very good and very beautiful out of the box. I mean, what can I say? I have no complaints. I mean, like I said, out of the box in just its settings with the way it came with out of the factory or, or for me out of Best Buy. This picture, this TV, the TV's picture, the screen, it's so vibrant and so beautiful to, to look at. It's what, I mean, the first time I saw it, I saw this picture, I saw the screen on this TV, I was instantly amazed and I fell in love with the picture and the TV and finding out that an OLED, I've never really thought I, I would be able to get an OLED TV but seeing how it was marked down because it was a display model, I had to get it. There's, I have no complaints. I mean, picture, the picture is very, it's, it's amazing. The sound is good, uh, better than your, any other, uh, you know, regular smart TV, unless that TV is like the LG's uh, W7 that comes with a sound bar. This TV, all, to, all in all, the sound quality, the picture quality is very good. There's a lot of settings that you can put on this TV to, like I said, to get it to where you like it. To If you want more realistic, more, you know, lifelike colors, you can do that if you, if you know how to calibrate your screen or if you want to get a professional calibrator. But look at all the reviews online on YouTube. And they'll tell you the same thing I'm telling you. The pictures are really good. They're very beautiful. And that's not, not just for watching, you know, TV or 4K demos. The upscaling on this TV is very nice, as you will see in a little bit. It upscales like anything from like a DVD quality uh, video into something that almost resembles 4K as you guys will see in a little bit. This X1 processing uh, chipset processor that Sony has, 
is really really excellent and so let me show you guys what I mean about upscaling and everything like that so this is an old DVD so this is an old DVD that I have of you know who and you know the movie it's a uh, pumping iron and you know who never looks so good I mean it gets this this is DVD and DVD I believe is 480 it tries to get it as close to a 4k quality as it can get and it looks nice I I, I rewatched this and I was amazed how how these bodybuilders look on this uh, TV watching it in with Sony's uh, X1 processor um, you know upscaling this uh, DVD video into something that's almost 4k was really nice and it's not just upscaling like these old movies but watching HDR movies or Dolby Vision uh, playing video games with HDR is really smooth and really nice on this TV watching sports like football which I can't show you due to copyright reasons so here is the remote of the Sony A1E TV it's the same as any of the other smart TVs in Sony's lineup um, this is the one thing where I think Sony's weakness is at is in this remote control they should have made it have a more premium finish instead of this rubber coating and like far metal on the bottom it feels nice to the touch as far as like the rubbery portion the top portion of the remote but it's kind of hard to navigate using this remote there's the top center button has the mic symbol and you can just use that to talk into the remote for getting certain things done but Sony needs to take a cue from Samsung or even LG in designing and making a better remote for their newer TVs that will be coming up soon also these buttons don't light up in the dark so they're very hard to see because of that when you're watching a movie and you have a very dark room you're not going to be able to see the buttons that you need to press and there's so many of them like I said it makes it hard to navigate also the remote is an IR remote so you got to point it directly at the TV instead of a Bluetooth remote that is used on the newer Samsung and uh, LG TVs so they, Sony needs to improve this so like I said in the beginning the A1E TV is running Google's Android smart TV uh, operating system which gives you access to Google Play, Google Play Store and all the other things that come with Google some reviewers like the operating, some reviewers hate it some are impartial to it but there's no denying that because it is Android you get all the settings and customizability that you get with Android even if it is Android TV at the time of this review this TV the Sony A1s are running Google Android 7.0 Marshmallow most of the smartphones are already getting ready to get Google Android 9.0 Pi and the latest Sony A9Fs and the Z9s, the Master Series, are all running Android 8.0 Nougat. So hopefully um, this TV will get the latest operating system from Sony soon, it should. Some reviewers say that this system, this operating system is like laggy or kind of buggy, but I never had that problem with this uh, with this uh, operating system. You could always speak into the remote and give it commands if you want to just bypass the the cursor and all the other stuff. Like you can get it to tell you to give you weather and basic things like that. As you can see there, it gave me the weather, the forecast, and everything. 
the one thing that it can't do is other commands like you would on your smartphone or even like some Samsung or Bixby on Samsung TVs or LG's or WebOS it can't do the other basic functions like say adjust picture settings or you know dim the TV by 10 or 20 percent and things like that it doesn't recognize those type of types of commands but like I said this being Android you get access to the Google Play Store and all the apps that come with it and so you can just as you see there I told it to find me all the 4k t uh, movies and things like that and this TV does have 16 gigs of internal storage built into it and it can do basic functions like turn off my TV but that's about it so the Sony a1 series of OLED TVs have glass panels that have anti reflective coatings on them but they could they still show glare as you can see here or reflections as you can see here from my room depending on if you if like when I had the curtains on there or now the curtains are closed and as you all know if you have an OLED TV you don't want to put it in a room with lots of windows and naturally like very bright room settings or something like that most OLEDs are best when you have it in a room where you can control the lighting and the room is naturally like somewhat dark or dim and not too bright but like I said this TV because it's an OLED has very good contrast ratios so you're gonna get what it makes what it lacks for in brightness like compared to LED LCD TVs it's got more infinite contrast and very black blacks that it'll enhance the colors on this TV and viewing angles on this TV are excellent you're not going to get degraded picture um, regardless of what viewing angles you have this TV on so like I said in the beginning I'm also using this TV as my computer monitor for my desktop and as a computer monitor it's been working out really well I know some people are saying oh man you're using an OLED TV as your computer monitor and as you know with static images if you have them on for too long on your display on your OLED display it'll you'll get screen burning and things like that but I don't think I'll ever get screen burning on this as far as for my uses because I'm always running videos and editing videos and I'll have it on different web pages and I don't use it for that long on one static image for very long so as you guys seen previously because this is such a big TV or monitor computer monitor for me I can run two pages or two windows at the same time probably even three if I wanted to so it's very convenient and like I said for most of my uses with this TV will be like video editing and then watching you know YouTube or Netflix on this TV also by default this TV will detect if there's no activity going on with the TV for five minutes or the screen is in one static image for five minutes or longer or usually just five minutes it'll go into screensaver mode and so when it goes into screensaver mode it'll refresh the pixels so that it'll clean up any possible burn-in and you can also it also set it for like every two weeks or month to uh, when the t when you turn the TV on you can um, have it refresh the screen or the whole TV the whole picture and pixels and everything like that while it's turned off and it does it for like a whole hour or so so it's best when you're not watching and using the TV so 
it's a screen burning it is it's it's a possibility but for my uses um and for what I'm, for what i'm gonna do I, i'm not too worried about it at this point in time plus i have a extended warranty on this tv Whew, man so that about wraps it up we've gone over a lot of stuff and uh, if you still made it by now i highly thank you guys for getting it getting this far so to wrap things up i'm very happy with this tv um once you go oled i don't think you'd ever go back to a normal lcd tv i mean the pictures on this are amazing the sound for a smart tv without built-in like a speakers or a sound bar sound amazing it's just an amazing TV overall and also as a computer monitor it's very excellent and does a job well as a computer monitor at least for me it does so all in all I'm very happy with this TV other than the minor issues with the remote not being up to snuff compared to its rivals from Samsung and LG and the voice control being a little limited this is a very excellent TV and if you can get it for a steal like I did or even maybe on a Black Friday I already got mine um, before the Black Friday I would highly recommend this TV so that is it for the review everybody thank you guys all for watching take care we'll see you soon for another video God bless and have a great day I'm trying my